Hi everyone, my name is Kinya Ota. I have spent more than 10 years studying goldfish evolution and development. Recently, my friend asked me to make detailed videos about the evolutionary developmental biology of goldfish. So I have decided to produce this video series based on my papers and my book. We will explore goldfish evolution. In this video, I will explain the method of artificial fertilization of goldfish. In spring, it becomes a beautiful season with green leaves of tropical almond. During this time, goldfish kept outdoor enter the spawning season. First of all, the first day of artificial fertilization work, I take up a mature, healthy male and a female goldfish. The reason we perform artificial fertilization is because we want to obtain fertilized eggs from goldfish with known genetic background, strain, and histories. In other words, we perform artificial fertilization to obtain fertilized eggs with clear records of which parent fish were involved and when fertilization occurred. Normally, if you keep mature males and females in the same aquarium tank, they will lay eggs. But this method is not reliable. I mean, the timing of the spawning is highly dependent on luck. In addition, we also have an arrangement for observation and experiment, so we would like to obtain fertilized eggs at the timing we desire. We obtain fertilized eggs at the desired timing. We separate males and females in different tanks. Keeping males and females separated in separate tanks reduces the risk of goldfish males and females laying eggs at the unwanted time. We carefully select matured males and females from the separated tanks. We choose energetic males that produce sperm effectively from the candidate male goldfish and select females with rounded and soft abdomens from the candidate female goldfish. It is extremely difficult for us to pinpoint a perfectly matured female goldfish at the optimal timing. Therefore, we select multiple female individuals. And tomorrow, I want females to lay their eggs as a plant, so I will use spawning inducer. It seems that there are several types of spawning inducer, but our laboratory uses this one, Ovaprim. By the way, there are various rules when using Ovaprim, so if you use it, please read the instruction manual properly and follow the dosage and use it correctly. Also, please note that this video is just an introduction video that says that our laboratory is doing this way. When you give the ovaprim to female goldfish, the fish may become agitated, so it is best to gently let the goldfish sleep. This is especially important when handling larger goldfish, as unexpected movement could potentially harm them. When the fish is anesthetized, pick it up immediately and inject it as it described in the instruction manual for the ovaprim. There are various tips on how to hold the fish and where to inject it. However, explaining each method in detail is challenging, so if you have any questions, please leave a comment. Then, after injecting ovaprim, immediately transfer the fish to a container containing fresh water and wash away the anesthetic solution. Then, let goldfish stay in a container of fresh water overnight. Don't forget to cover tightly. There's a risk of the goldfish jumped out during the night. It's been overnight, let's start our work on the second day. Thanks to Ovaprim, the female lay eggs. If you inject the male, you will get a lot of sperm. First, take sperm from the male. This work also uses anesthesia to have the male quiet and in the meantime take the sperm into a syringe. The important point here is to make sure you properly wipe out the water drops from the goldfish's body. If water drops mix with the sperm, the success rate of artificial fertilization will significantly decrease. Then use a syringe to collect sperm. At this time, lightly push the abdomen, and if sperm leaks out from the cloaca, suck it up with a syringe and repeat this process. 
And when you have collected enough sperm, let the male goldfish wake up from anesthesia and immediately return it to the aquarium. Another important point is that this syringe that takes sperm contains sperm extender. In other words, it contains something like a saline solution that keeps sperm active, mix the extender and the obtained sperm well and store. If it is kept in the refrigerator at 4 degrees, it is sure you can use it again the next day. However, I'm wondering if sperm are active, so check the activity of the obtained sperm. Drop sperm on a glass slide and mix this with water on the cover glass. In the past, I used to observe the one male's sperm at the time, but recently I've been attempting to observe multiple sperms simultaneously for efficiency. However, when checking the sperm from multiple male goldfish, please be careful of contamination. Then, observe this slide glass under the microscope to confirm sperm activity. You can see how sperm moves around actively when mixed with water. Goldfish sperm loses its activity when it comes into contact with water. Therefore, the syringe containing sperm should be kept away from water at all times. Now, when the sperm is ready, we will proceed with the preparation of the egg. I use a plastic dish to observe the fertilized eggs and I coat the surface of this plastic dish with tea. In nature, goldfish lay eggs on some kind of the substrate such as aquatic plant. Therefore, the adhesive strength of goldfish egg is extremely strong and almost anything stick to them. Therefore, it is possible to lay eggs on the root uh, of these plants and observe them, but uh, that is inconvenient when observing under the microscope. That's why I use this kind of plastic dish. However, if it sticks too strongly to the plastic dish, it will be inconvenient for the later work. So I will use tea this time in this way and coat the bottom of this dish to reduce the adhesive strength. When the plastic dish is ready, take the egg from female goldfish. Firstly, anesthetize and prepare a teflon dish. When the anesthesia is effective, remove the water drops well before starting the egg collection. As in the case of sperms, if water drops touch the eggs before fertilization, artificial fertilization will surely fail. Therefore, it is necessary to wipe off the water drops from the female's body as well. Gently press the female's abdomen to squeeze the eggs. Once the eggs are squeezed out, the procedure should be quick. Drop a few drops of sperms from the syringe onto the eggs. Shake the teflon dish to mix the sperms and the eggs, then drop them onto the plastic dish filled with water. Eggs do not stick to this teflon dish so much, which is very useful during artificial fertilization. Now I would like to explain the maturation of eggs. After several artificial fertilization, you will notice that there is a difference in egg maturity. And empirically, uh, these yellowish eggs are overmatured and are not good for experiment. Actually, the color of the eggs changes depending on the breeding environment, so it is difficult, but uh, it seems that eggs that are greenish and have less water tend to be easier to use for the experiment. Spread the sperms and eggs onto the plastic dish, then wait for about 5 minutes. During this time, sperms that have come into contact with water move around and reach the eggs for fertilization. Then wash the fertilized eggs with bleach and tap water. The embryo inside is protected by a strong egg membrane, so it is good time to perform strong bleaching. After soaking these eggs in the diluted bleaching solution for 5 minutes, neutralize it with sodium thiosulfate and wash them with tap water several times. By bleaching in this way, you can reduce the risk of infection from mold parasites and other organisms. When observing embryogenesis for a long time, it is a problem if the eggs are infected by water mold. So, this bleaching process is very important. 
In this way, during the spring spawning season, many artificial fertilization works are performed with a combination of multiple males and females. Put the obtained fertilized eggs in the incubator. The temperature of the incubator is set to 24 degrees. By doing this, you can predict the progress of embryogenesis. This makes it easier to plan observation and experiment on embryonic development. In this video, you should now have a good understanding of how artificial fertilization is conducted on goldfish. In our next episode, we will delve into observing the development of these fertilized goldfish eggs. It is time to say goodbye. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel to catch the next episode. See you soon.